Well, again, we're going to be working with the cotangent graph this time instead of the tangent, but I left all the information up there about uh, the table and the basic structure of a tangent because you get to see what happens. I erased the asymptotes, though, of the tangent graph because we're going to have to have some new vertical asymptotes. So when I do that, I'm going to make myself a table. And in relation to the um, uh, tangent graph, the cotangent is just the reciprocal. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flipping all our y values. Now that, does that make a difference? Uh, absolutely, actually. And we'll see where it does make a difference. Um, what that basically means is this. Wherever the tangent graph was 0 over 1, now the cotangent graph is going to be 1 over 0. So this is going to be negative 1 over 0, which is still undefined, and this is going to be 1 over 0. So my vertical asymptotes are going to be just changed around, because now this was a vertical asymptote, but now instead of 1 over 0, it's 0 over 1. Instead of negative 1 over 0, it's 0 over negative 1. And 1 over 1 is still the same. Whew, good. That's still negative 1. That's still 1. That's still negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to see what our graph looks like here, when I graph my cotangent. So at 0, it's undefined. So I'm going to have to put a vertical asymptote here, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. And at uh, pi, it's undefined, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And without even looking at the table, I should know where the next one is. Basically, wherever the tangent was 0, the cotangent will be undefined, because I'm doing the reciprocal value. You could look at the table, too, if you'd like to. So at pi over 4, it's 1. At uh, 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2, it's 0. And then this one goes to negative 1. And then it's undefined at 4 pi over 4, or pi. At 5 pi over 4, it's 1. Okay, I'm going to take a guess at 0 at 6 pi over 4. Yes! 7 pi over 4, I'm going to take a guess at 1. It's not really a guess, actually. I'm just actually using these uh, fantastic points from the tangent you, uh, to figure out my information. And I could keep going if I want to, but this is 1 pi, that's 2 pi. Eh, that's good enough for me. So when I graph this bad boy, it's going to look like this. So similar to the tangent, except 1, its vertical asymptotes are changed. It's put to a different direction. It looks kind of like a phase shift. It, it looks really cool, though, when you graph the tangent and the cotangent together. If I wanted to do this one, it would be like this. Um, let's see, and then that one would be there. Negative 1, and then the next one would be undefined. So if I want to do that, I could do that as well. But that's what the cotangent graph looks like. It's uh, kind of like uh, it's reflected, but it's also pulled a little bit further, too. That's about it. That's obviously because uh, the first one is sine over cosine, and the other one's cosine over sine, so it's going to affect your vertical asymptotes. The one down, the one and the negative one will be the same. Uh, zero for a tangent will turn into an undefined, and um, for a cotangent, pardon me, and an undefined for a tangent will turn into a zero for a cotangent. Really cool. Uh, the range is the same as the tangent. It's from negative infinity to infinity. The domain is pretty difficult, actually. Uh, it's all, well, I just say it's all values, excluding, that's how I like writing it. Some people might not like the way that I write that. And basically what it is, is it doesn't include 0, it doesn't include pi, it doesn't include 2 pi, it doesn't include 3 pi. So basically what it is, is it's pi times n, where n is an integer. You know, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just only those num types of numbers. So if n is 0, 0 times pi is 0, bam. Um, if n is 1, 1 pi, and that's and pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, etc. So that's your range and your uh, domain. Your period is the same as your tangent graph, except it just looks different. It's at pi. So I'm not going to make the mistake of writing 2 pi. See, uh, here it's going at 0 and it's going down. And here it's going at 0 and going down, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4 pi spots away, 4 pi over 4 is pi. So that's pretty cool. I don't think there's anything else I really have to talk about. The domain is the same as the um, secant value, because the secant value, uh, sorry, yeah, it is the same as the secant value, because the secant value also has cosine in the denominator. Oh, I'm sorry, no. 
the uh, domain of the um, cotangent is the same as the cosecant, pardon me, because the sine is in the denominator in the cotangent, and the sine is also in the denominator of the cosecant, pardon me. Got a little mixed up when I was looking there, but I fixed that. So with that said, I hope that was helpful. It's actually relatively difficult for students. And if I go ahead and I erase these purple graphs, maybe it'll give you a better indication of what it looks like. And that's supposed to go up more. And there we go. It's kind of the best I could do on such short notice, but I thought it was really cool to show both of them at the same exact time. Like I did with the cosecant and the sine, and like I did with the secant and the cosine. With that said, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now.